dark, rich, complex. The grapes grown at Chateau Montalena have produced some of California's best wine for decades. These grapes have consistently been the starting point for an unbroken string of first growth wine in the Bordeaux tradition. Situated north of San Francisco, the chateau sits at the head of the Napa Valley, ideal country for growing a world-class grape. Under the direction of Jim Barrett, Chateau Montalena has been a family-operated winery for over 30 years and has grown some of the greatest wine America has ever produced. We struck gold when we started to make wine here because of the soil, the location, the climate. If we were growing grapes somewhere else in the valley, we couldn't do it. The single most unique attribute of Montalena is the soil complexity in this 100-acre vineyard. The complex soil system gives a complexity to the wine that's not artificial, it's not man-made, it's not the hand of man, it's this place, and that's what we try to capture every year. Beau Barrett, Chateau Montalena's winemaker, literally grew up working this soil and observing the weather, day in and day out, season by season. Growing grapes and then eventually making the wine is a long and complicated process and there's probably the decision chain could be as many as 400 critical decisions on any given year. Is it gonna rain? Is it not gonna rain? How should we prune? Do we need to fertilize? You know, how do we thin? How do we tie? How do you take the leaves off? Is it ripe? Beau's knowledge of the land and mesoclimate allows Chateau Montalena to produce a consistently outstanding wine. The main thing in red wine is you want a cold nighttime temperature. We get cold, cooling, downslope air every night washing through the vineyards and that allows the acid to stay really firm and allows the nature of the grape to be very concentrated. So we have the best of two worlds, very high daytime temperatures to get strong berry flavors and ripeness, but very cold nighttime temperatures to allow the structure of the wine to remain really powerful and concentrated. From the beginning, the wine growing team understood the need to plant the right grape in the right place. The estate vineyards feature 11 separate blocks of Cabernet Sauvignon, along with blocks of other red grape varietals. The Chardonnay vineyards are located just north of the town of Napa, where the climate is ideally suited to Chardonnay. What we look for most in Chardonnay is a gentleness and a softness to the wine. The southern Napa Valley, we have much cooler daytime temperatures, but it's also warmer at night, so you're not looking at a 50 degree differential that we'll see here, because that can make wines too strong. Decades of experience with the same grapes in the same soil means that quality is consistent year after year. I've been working on this vineyard since I was a young man. The individual experience with the field is critical because you work with the land year in, year out, and eventually you get to the point where you can really trust your vineyard. You know that piece of ground and you can make these extremely critical, really lifeblood decisions for that vintage. You taste two or 400 berries as you're walking through the row and you say, 99 out of 100 are perfect. I think that would be a good safe bet to pick that. Day or night, when the grapes are ready to be harvested, experienced pickers move through the rows, selecting only those grapes which meet the winery standards. Night harvesting, assures grapes begin the process at the proper temperature. We harvest the Chardonnay at night primarily for cold juice temperatures. When you crush and press Chardonnay juice, different flavors come off the grapes at different temperatures. And for the style of wine we like to make, we like the cold pressed juice. Yield is kept intentionally low, which helps keep quality high. 
The low crop yields allows us with our lighter soils to get the grapes ripe every year with great maturity and that allows us to make a more consistent wine. Crushing, fermenting, aging, and bottling occur here at the Chateau. Each step of the process overseen by the winemaker. What we look for in this day cab is it has to taste like the vineyard that year. It actually has to taste like Montalana. Over the years, we've styled the wine to represent the vineyard in those soils. The alluvial, which is the dominant, the volcanic, which is, has that cedar tone, and then the fresh fruit out of the sedimentary or silty soil. What we do is we taste them and we say, this is a Montalana, this is not a Montalana. This is one of the crafts and art of winemaking that you only learn from doing it over and over and over and year in, year out. This tradition of excellence is rooted in history. Built by Senator Alfred Tubbs in 1882, the chateau is carved into the north side of a hill, forming its own man-made cave. Prohibition ended winemaking here for decades until Jim Barrett purchased the property which had fallen into disuse. When I first saw the winery here, this was in 1972, it was just a, a big stone building. Uh, walls were three feet thick, but it was empty. It was full of ghosts and spiders. That was it. And I went out and looked at the vineyard, and it was, you know, trash grapes, and it was just a mess. But I looked at it, and being an incurable romantic, I said, my God, look at this whole building, and look at where it is at the foot of Mount St. Helena. I said, this is just absolutely spectacular. A team was assembled, and sharing a common vision began producing wine. From the beginning, the goal was simple, to make the best wine. Back in 1972, when we got started, uh, I decided not to try to reinvent the wheel, and uh, uh, really we used, I used uh, as our role model, the uh, first gross of, of, of France, Bordeaux. So first, I had to figure out, how do you do that? I found out, first and foremost, they had uh, very unique grapes coming from specific sites, and they'd been there for years and years and years. They had been working with the same grape, uh, the same winery, uh, the same personnel, all trying in their way to make world-class wines. And I said, okay, that's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to make a world-class wine in the new world. His efforts soon paid off, and in four short years, Chateau Montalena stunned the wine world by winning the Paris tasting of 1976. I got the word that uh, we had won this tasting, and it really didn't sink in until later when we realized who the tasters were, and then it was picked up by Time Magazine, and our name just exploded in the wine world, not just in the United States, but all over, in Australia and France and everywhere. It was that event which really propelled us. It was just like a, a rocket burst. Shadow Montalina's name was before everyone else. The reverberations from that were extraordinary because it caused the French to look at what they were doing and they worked very, very hard to improve their wine. The Australians said, if the Americans can do it, we can do it. The Chileans did exactly the same thing. It affected winemaking throughout the whole world. It was really a threshold event, improving quality of wine all over the world. For Jim Barrett, it was proof that he'd been doing it right. Our reputation is that of a world-class winery. The wines would not be as good as they are, but for the fact that we have a team and a passion to develop it, because we have great pride in the fact that we have the opportunity to make world-class wines from this vineyard. Excellence at Chateau Montalena works from the ground up. The perfect soil, the perfect climate, decades of experience, and a commitment that is renewed each and every day that only the best will carry the Montalena label.
Wine is a transitory product. It's somewhere between grape juice and vinegar, and the hand of man and its interventions is everything. Without the people, the wine would not get made. We're not interested in making a lot of wine. We're just interested in making the best wine.